Welcome, Spikelings, to the Shark Typhoon. That was weird. Okay. Yeah, we have, we also have a relic to tutor off Urza Saga to, to self-exile. Um, okay, I'm going to keep this hand. I'm not sure exactly how I'm sequencing it. I guess I should just lead on the uh, the channeler. And um, I guess Blood Crypt Basic Force seems okay. Could also do Overgrown Tomb. Oh, sorry, sorry. Stomping Ground Swamp. Let's do a uh, Stomping Ground Swamp. Jerum, eight months. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to Magic Con Chicago. I'm going to play in the standard event and then uh, probably just hang out the rest of the time. Goodbye, Insidious Roots. Hmm. Interesting draw. I think against Coffers, I'm just going to play Saga. I'm going to play my cookbook. I may even. Okay, well. Obviously, nice find there. Maybe I'll play NT next turn. Get to get like two triggers. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Will I admit Cookbook is my favorite modern card? I don't think it is. I don't. I don't think I have a favorite modern card. But I would. I would say it's. It's almost definitely not Cookbook. Offers a very tough matchup. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. I have two needles in the sideboard, which make me a little bit more optimistic. Like, just I, I always find like having the second needles so so good at this matchup. Want to Inti first? Um, I wanted to get the cookbook down first. So Inti is better. Inti is way better if cookbook is already in play. Inti is also better if you have not played your land drop or have a mana available. Um, And I wanted to get the uh, the saga established too, but I, I wanted to, I just wanted to, it's I think it's just good to get cookbook in play before you play NT basically always in these like interactive matchups. Um, I think I'm gonna upkeep fetch a fetch a surveil land. Makes sense. I think that makes sense. I agree with that. that might as well pick this up this is uh very likely going to be a hard cast double chase daredevil game at this point much reason to keep this not really no delirium missing an artifact or instant Stop yielding against the Blood Saga. I wasn't yielded to the this thing. Okay, they just take that big hit, so that's obviously nice. A slam a ring. Draw okay. card. Twenty lands of the deck, by the way. Okay, thank you, NT. A little bit of a bailout. We'll see a little, you know, it's just a good top deck, I guess. Cycle. Might, might as well equip here. That's back. Yeah, I saw, I saw uh, Pascal's. I saw this. I saw this deck. I, I like Pascal's list all the time. I've always been a big fan. The main deck forced to despair. Like I saw this, and I'm like, literally, no one, no one in modern like would ever have the gumption <laughs> to main deck force of despair. Besides Pascal. Uh, okay, so opponent is has played the ring. Let's go ahead and just attack for our NT trigger, I guess. Hopefully, NT can keep up on some of this card advantage. Up card Urza Saga. Well, that's uh, getting fielded for sure. Next card is an Asmo. It's a good pickup. I 
gonna play the saga, I guess. Play the cookbook. And then I think I'm actually gonna cookbook the stair devil on my opponent's turn. Cause I I I just think I just wanna cast a daredevil here. Very much hoping they don't have a a damnation. You see the MTG FGC five out of miracles. I saw someone five out of miracles yesterday. I can't remember their username. Um, yeah, I think I think miracles is pretty good. I know it's kind of weird to say, but it's been pretty good. Also, my uh, my sign is off. So they cling my cling. Eats. Lots of card players have just won the mission two target. Yeah, sometimes it's two though. Yeah, I, I know. I know just one sometimes. It's like I think it's like if they don't have profane tutor, it's two. If they do have profane tutor, a lot of times it's just one. Not dead after all triggering roots. It's, it's interesting. Because thing you know, one one tough thing is like, oh, you have grief scam and you're opening him, but you have roots. Do you like wait? Probably not. I guess that's probably not the biggest issue. Right, let me just go ahead and uh, trigger the NT here. Oops, another cookbook. Yeah, I, I think Profane Tutor is, uh, I, I've always liked Profane Tutor a lot in Coffers, but I agree I'd be playing it now. Get a Mountain since they have Urborg in play. Using Cat Oven, Party of Thousand Roots, any chance to cross the spine? Yeah, dude, this, <laughs> yeah, I've thought about Cat Oven. <laughs> um, we might still play Cat Oven deck, the Sam combo builds with Roots, Evo K. Uh, um... I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure what direction I'd like to go with the the cat oven builds. It's also like if I, I was gonna play cat oven, I, I may like to try to be like an Oni Cult Anvil deck or like a Mayhem Devil deck with Blood Gas. But you know, there's in some ways kind of a lack of overlapping synergy there. Probably that's got to be the wrong target. Also, they're just dead dead right dead on board. Yeah, Inti has more power because it's a four four that's gonna get an extra counter. I guess I have, the, I have this to just go trigger. You just win the game. Okay, Epic Gaming is Coffers. I'm going to bring in both Pithing Needles. Usually, I think you just want... I guess you could also play the Might. Usually you just want two needles against them because it's just like so hard for them to interact with this card. And then you just need, need one needle on card and one needle on ring, and they just they have a very hard time winning. I don't think I don't think we need the mine. I don't think we need the pick your poisons. We got the shadow spear for Sherzies. Oh, not the spring with maybe, maybe also the spring with drum actually. <laughs> yeah, it actually feels kind of reasonable. It's funny. Let's do this. How does escape work with VXL creature with the cost of creatures? Yeah, that was something I was wondering with Kroxa. Does yeah, if if you escape Kroxa, I feel like it should just be one trigger because it's all one thing exiling the creatures. But I could, I would, I would love to be wrong about that because it'd be very cool. Okay, love to have roots active on turn two. Obviously, my opponent could cast a Thoughtseize, although they are on a mold of five. Yeah, I'm going to hundred burden. I've I've been to the hundred burden. I think I think I think I've been to the last seven hundred burdens. I've been to at least the last six. They are on the mold of four. Two triggers, awesome, cool. I'm happy to be wrong about that if that's the case. Yeah, I think I most of three. Okay, well, this is a little unfortunate because they may concede and I won't get to go cookbook into roots with my engine online. I'm annoying the first match of these against the card deck. Yeah, but we're gonna win, so a little less annoying, right? <laughs> Cost is paid, and then croaks on the stack would be two. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah that makes sense. They're gonna find it out. Looks like they're gonna find it out. They have a song and send it out. That's like a two for one. This I wish this list covered Vinge Vines. Yeah, I, I think you could try to play a Vinge Vine list. Maybe that's maybe that's like the oh we drew e. Maybe that's the cat uh cat deck, right? I kinda wanna draw a land. Let me uh on the ground here. And make a daredevil before they've cleaned to dust up. Next time we get to go roots, make a token, then we get to go untap NT Asmo. If we hit a land off of our draws or the NT triggers, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I 
So do I upkeep the cookbook activation to just give them the smallest chance of having a cling? I guess I just have two daredevils actually, so I don't really care that much. Very funny to have just like such a perfect hand against a mold of three. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, so let's go. Roots. Happy to draw land here, of course. Then I'll, I'll save I'll save this activation uh, in case they go land damnation. <laughs> they go land animation. It's like it's like best possible and like not close to good enough. Nice hit, hit all four land drops. Had two cards in their hand on the mold of three. As coffers come back from roots cookbook stuff, they just cast a card. Asmo go itself so they don't gain three life. Bigger roots two more times. So we're gonna put they're, they're just dead on board we're just gonna put four counters on everything okay i won't i won't waste their time with the nt shenanigans roots is very powerful roots is a very very crazy card like you tell me two two bandit enchantments did this <laughs> over the course of two turns i guess three turns the play uh, i've done zero like, i guess i guess there, i have done zero timeless brew we played the um show and tell deck but I, i've i've been mostly focused on modern well, so the mold of six in the play um that makes sure for titan and tron the same thing that's always for through an empty can't get our Surveil land because it's a Rakdos land. Kind of weird. I'm actually going to play Urza Saga turn one. Like, this hand just needs a cookbook in play as soon as possible. And the way to do that is going to be to play the cookbook Saga to get a, a Roots Daredevil on line turn three. I'm also, if, I'm, if, if I play NT next turn, which I won't always play NT next turn, I'm going to need to do it off Blood Crypt, not Basic Mountain, so that I can cast my Roots on turn three. Hope we get some Polluted Delta. Scam doesn't have that much one minute removal if that's if this is scam. I'm just gonna cast it. My fear with roots of the metagame is does not line up against Cascade. I think Roots is good. I think this deck is good against Rhinos, bad against Living End. Um And Rhinos is way more of the Cascade deck. Um As As Asmo and Roots are and Urza Saga are all really, really good cards against Rhinos. Do you cite out Asmore Bobble when citing in Chalice? Yeah. Some numbers. Black white scam, the graveyard of grief. Ending the inti. Like a roots. This is Gorios. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, five cards in their hand. They target cookbook dot roots. Really wrecks me. Good play by them. And he's a good draw at least. Maybe they, I don't know, this, this is a lot of removal for them to be Gorios. Graveyard, another Oval Chase Daredevil, so as soon as we draw an artifact, we get to trigger roots twice. 
a good amount of artifacts in the deck. Yeah, I'm also surprised Odorak hasn't played the Miracles deck. Maybe he's not a believer. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, I was definitely. Yeah, yeah. Croaks are triggering roots twice, and like the Jun sacrifice cat oven deck could be good. I was. I was definitely when I started this the Jun build. The Croaks was a card I had like two of in my opening draft, but it just it just isn't like very castable in your Urza Saga deck that also wants to play a basic forest. You would cut the basic forest, I think, if you had Croaksa, but I think you just don't play it in this build. Clean to, Clean to Dust is also very good. Yeah, the, Mir the Miracles deck has been really, really fun, glad you're liking the deck. Yeah, cause we haven't drawn a Seed of Hope yet, but it's been pretty good for me so far. It was a lot. My opponent shocks and held Fountain and then passes. I draw another land, 20 lands in the deck. Four of them are Urza Sagas. They don't have a hard cast Solitude up, so... I'm gonna go on the plant, I think. There's the Urza Saga. So this will allow me to trigger both roots next turn. Since I have two Daredevils in my yard. If you have a removal spell, okay, so now they're gonna go tainted and are they gonna go tainted plus Gorios? Panda was summoning it to them. <laughs> yeah, I guess subtlety would have been a reason to put the counter here, huh? Yeah, Street Wraith lets you cast Asmo turn one. It lets you it also triggers NT. If you have NT in play, you can cycle Street Wraith for zero mana, trigger NT. Which makes playing a two mana two two a lot less rough. Okay, they discard a Traxa after like <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> Not 30, 20 seconds. Um, we have a main deck Relic in the deck, but maybe a little far. I, I, you know, I bet they have Gorios in their hand, and they're, like, thinking about the merits of, like, blocking NT versus instep Gorios. They're going to instep Gorios. Yeah, it's going to be tough to win. <laughs> so far, I've been favorite card from modern from the new set uh i mean the surveillance has been really good i've been really really liking cryptic coat um it's weird i like i, I roots is also very good but like i i haven't like i really haven't been playing that much like a huge diversity of cards this time around i usually do i also want to play this deck like just like gorias with like some surveillance but it hasn't been that exciting for some reason to me they choose Archaeologist, Pending, Marsh Flats, Ephemerate. Well, it'd be very tough to beat this. Sack food. Uh, yeah, I guess so we don't just get two turned. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I, I really dis I disliked Leyline and the Devotion decks and Pioneer. Oh, I did. I guess I did, did Pioneer Devotion. I just liked Leyline in the Pioneer Devotion decks. I liked Charm a lot in, in both Modern and Pioneer Devotion. Um, I need food for Asmo. Well, Asmo can't even kill this if I draw it. Did you touch the Spirit Realm? I don't, I don't know why. I guess they're playing this for types for Atraxa. Yeah, it's also like Flickers Atraxa. This is actually kind of okay. Asmo kills Atraxa for only two food. Oh, right, because it has Death Touch. All right. Cool, good trick. We also, I guess, it was we can cast Asmo. So, I mean, they're gonna pending my NT, so though I can no longer cast Asmo. Yeah, I consider playing Red and Six of the stack. Um, you totally could. I don't think I have a lot of extra. Yeah, oh, I just right. At one point, I did not have these relics. Kind of good to have a. Uh, Three of them here, huh? Yeah, Wraith and Dazzle. I'm, I'm gonna sack, I'm gonna sack the food with the with the plan of trying to overpower my opponent with two copies of Insidious Roots. Will this plan work? Probably not, but they still have a touch of the Spirit Realm in their hand too. Even NT. Earth Clyde, eight months. Thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. They're gonna touch the Atraxa. Oh, they're gonna touch the token. Okay. Um, I guess I will figure roots twice here. Oh, because I've been at two roots of four times. 
It's a lot of power toughness. They confidently do not rebound the Ephemerate. So they put a Faithful Mending into their hand here. Yeah, also, by, by the way, I think I think my opponent has it right here. They have, it looks like they have one... Oh, they have a Hedge Mage also. I don't know if I play Hedge Mage, but I, I, do, I do agree in their decision to play at least one of each of the Esper Surveil lands. You, you could also play Hedge Mage. Four is maybe, maybe one too many. That's maybe fine also. I've been kind of taking a break from deck techs and enjoying it lately. Uh, I'll probably bring them back next week. It's been kind of nice to just uh, have a little break. So one kind of thing that's kind of interesting here is like the main thing that they can do to get out of this is go like Solitude Ephemerate. But um, that's going to gain me enough life to probably take another Atraxa hit. Yeah, this is a lot of Touch of Spirit Realms. They have one in play, one in their graveyard, and maybe, maybe just two total. I feel like I probably wouldn't play more than one. I don't, I don't, I don't hate the first copy, though. Redeem Deck Tech to show you me and Brew get refunded? No. <laughs> Well, maybe. No, actually, no. Okay, so they exile one of my two copies of Roots. Things a little bit trickier, of course. Uh, I guess I'm going to not make a construct. Get a cookbook. See what NT gives us. A Street Wraith that could cast. Doesn't seem like casting would be very productive. So what if happens if I attack with everything? They block here, they block here. I put a counter probably on this. They gain seven and they're pretty alive, fortunately. I need to like find Asmo or something. So I guess I'll just actually only attack with this since I, well, nah. Well, except because I could chain some like Seed of Hopes and stuff together. I just have so much mana. Let's let's actually just try to find Asmo here. So I find Seed of Hope. This um, could actually grow my stuff in combat. Were your deck text always giving advice on proven decks instead of traditional deck text where you describe the game plan, and deck, and cool interactions? Yeah, I, yeah, of course. Why would I? Why would why would you redeem a deck tech for me to describe your own deck to you? Or like describe like the the strategy of your one deck. I don't know. I, I I people ask me sometimes when like people talk to me about like what I do for a living. And they talk about oh I I want to get into magic. Maybe I'll tune in. It's like my stream is very bad for like very for like introduction to magic content and or like very surface level. Oh, I can just sack a food and be alive here. But like kind of surface level evaluations like that. I like I like to get really deep and juicy into it I, i'm not i'm not very interested in like just like someone submitting a deck tech for an, ex an existing archetype and i just kind of explain what it does um i want to get i want to get deep and juicy into it i don't really i don't really care much for content creator brain all right today we're going to explain living in living in is a deck that cycles its creatures into the graveyard and uses three mana cascade spells to cast living in every single time you cast violent outburst or shardless agent you can use force of negation and subtlety and grief to protect your combo plan you know it's just that it's not me i really respect people who can do that kind of stuff though people who can do that kind of stuff why do you play tokens make mana that's what uh, roots uh, says also tokens have the ability to make mana i respect people who can do that kind of stuff but i just really can't all right cast mending flashback mending you crush it. Yeah, but the thing is, my, like, energy meter for that stuff is very limited. <laughs> my my energy meter is, uh... Is, it gets taxed really fast. <laughs> but of course I crushed it. Okay, because we have another Daredevil in the yard, uh, this roots will trigger twice here. I'm down to a nice, clean one life. Why did they make me from a design standpoint? I make a broken card. Yeah, I guess that's another a new YouTube short. I, I posted a YouTube short last night of the uh, the blind flip counterbalance on confusion in the ranks. I'm gonna try to like upload a couple of week. We'll see what happens. We get three triggers. We attack first. Pitch another daredevil to empty. We could, yeah, we could. That would let us grow in combat, but also 
doing the cookbook first lets me maybe find Asmo pre-combat and kill this. Also, I don't think my opponent has Solitudes in their main deck, or they just, like... We haven't seen any in 30 revealed cards. But, you know, they cut, they cut something for these Touch the Spirit Realms and Prismatic Endings from, like, the list I like to play. Like, basically everything else is the same, it seems. Ooh, another cookbook. So let me do this first, because if I find another Roots off the NT trigger, then we get more triggers. Wow, that's exactly what happened. I've been calling a lot of shots lately. <laughs> so let me say, uh, I guess, no, actually, to... Wait. Yeah, no to both of these. Lord, show me how to say no to this. I can't say no to this. If they had white man up, we should probably play the other cookbook first, but... Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're in on Leyland Binding because they have all the uh, surveil lands. So this should trigger... We should get six root triggers here. So I don't have enough food to gain my way my light life out of this like this time. Are they just dead though? Hopefully they're just dead. Looks like I have another okay, those the triggers already resolved. Or the, the daredevil's already gone. So trample on this, so they'll block a nine power creature. They're gonna gain seven up to thirty-four. Then they're gonna take sixteen. Plus 12, 18, 23, 25. Uh, that's not enough. I have to find an Asmo. I'm going to leave back a plant token so I could flip Seed of Hope. But Traxa dies. Oh. Uh, right. <laughs> Did I fuck up? Did they are they do they still they still have to block. They still have to block. Can they block this? Did I fuck up? 18 plus 12, 30, 32. They gain 4 up to 34. Yeah. I also have a fatal push. Okay, I don't think I was beating fatal push. I mean I get I get one more look at Asmo also here. Yeah, I was not so so yeah, they they were dead, no fatal push. They didn't have it though. Roots they have so much power toughness. Come on, Asmo. I also would now have the, like enough food. I find a relic of Progenitus, which gives me another look. But it has to be exactly Asmo. I can't like find Seed of Hope off of this. I, I have one plant token up here. What a crazy game one. Yeah, no Asmos top 31 cards. So much power toughness. Almost, uh, almost, uh, fought through them. Okay, let's bring in three relics. It's a good game. Got the Shadow Spear. Um, I don't think I'm bringing Haywire Might for their Touch the Spirit Realms. I also have a Cling to Dust. Do I cut? Everything looks great. Trim a drum. Seems okay. Trim a wraith. Trim a bobble. Probably trim a bobble over a wraith. Yeah, wild boards hit to concede. Close game. Close game. It is actually... I'm, I'm glad I didn't punt the lethal so bad because they had the fatal push. But I, it's, they seem like they're playing prismatic ending and fatal push and touch the spare realm over solitude in their ephemerate deck, which is also wild to me. And they're touch the spare realm uh, ephemerate deck. Wouldn't Shadow Spear have been killer? Shadow Spear is not a good card in this matchup. It would have been, it would not, it would not even even been good that game because they just pushed the, the 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 token there. This is this is one of the worst matchups I think you could possibly imagine for Shadow Spear. Is Poison not amazing? Uh, I mean, Asmo, we have Asmo to kill Atraxa. I don't, I, 
Killing Atraxa is not a winning battle, especially at sorcery speed. You want to stop that Atraxa from coming into play. But we still can kill Atraxa. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Pick your poison is not good against the draw six <laughs> flyer. <laughs> that is also drained, hits you for seven. Huh. Sounds good if we draw land and we have three looks. There's other text. I mean, the other text is not that relevant. It just kills touch the spirit realm. I'm not going to bring it in. I, don't, I think it's it's bad to bring in. They're not. I don't think they're playing binding. They shouldn't be on binding. All right, missed on our first look. This is a green source or like a stomping ground to be. Maybe be a super slam dunk. No, so Asmo kills the tracks with only two food tokens because it has death touch. So it, it also gained them seven life, notably. Thank you, lands. Let's go to the Daredevil for the counter. Seems okay. Fortunately, this relic is now out of exile. That's what it is. Create a reunion to Discord to give big haste to tokens. Discord an EDH card. What would you cut for Bitter Reunion? I, I don't hate it. it triggers NT, cast Asmo. Uh, so I have to grave read this because I can't put it into my hand off Seed of Hope, but I have a nice card to have in the yard here, of course. All right, let's grab Street Wraith. I, I want to find, maybe if I find an artifact first, it's better with NT because I could discard the Daredevil. I find an Insidious Roots. Um, which I cannot cast this turn under any circumstance because I have just Mountain Up. Even if I find Springleaf Trump, it's not good enough. I find a Wooded Foothills. So I'll probably attack and then discard the Foothills that's in my hand. Find a Seed of Hope. Uh, I do have Stomping Ground still as Fetchable Green for that. Hopefully we're not getting a, a Traxid here. Get rid of that. There's a Saga into hand, I guess. Obviously nothing else. And pass the turn. Oh yeah, hopefully we don't see a Tainted Indulgence go on the stack. Put a Trax into the yard. Or Mending, I guess. They have to have the Gorios now. They also have to have Black Source, I guess, which is the biggest cost. But I have to cling to dust in my yard that could get the, um, that could snipe the Atraxa. They do discard an Atraxa. They also discard a Black Source. All right, we know about Delta too. Truly, if they have Gorios, they're not tanking on, like, Fetch for Swamp. <laughs> Gorios Atraxa here. So I'm going to play around Gorios here by not uh, casting the cards in my hand. I actually also don't discard. I guess I could discard the forest, maybe. I don't like my hand. Let's just not. Let's just attack for seven. Two turn clock. Cling to dust up for Atraxa. Seems like it, it, it kind of feels like their plan is to maybe Gorios on defense here. Chance that they missed. I have this. Yeah, force of negation. Can't really beat that. Worked out. So exile one land, two seed of hope. I guess another seed of hope because the cling will be an instant in the yard. And a uh empty street wraith. I already have one. I got to just with that. Oh, they do have force mitigation. Okay, sick. Well, that sucks. Do they also have ephemerate? Uh, no ephemerate to be seen at the moment. Oh, I lost delirium because my cling to dust got exiled. I see. 
They choose Touch the Spirit Realm, which they can't use to flicker Atraxa here. Fatal Push, Archaeologist, Prismatic Ending, and Undercity Sewers. Hopefully they don't have Ephemerate as one of the other cards. And they, they don't at the moment, so we could potentially battle back here. They were going to lose the Channeler to this Prismatic Ending, and I bet they play Archaeologist and Archaeologist first. Notably, they do not mill over an Atraxa, but they do mill over an Ephemerate and Agorios. Or, sorry... Grief Ephemerate Pusher, the middle cards. They put they put Ephemerate into their hand. Using Force of Negation to force through combos of turn feels against the Spirit of the card. I mean, that's <laughs> certainly what the card is best at. They discard Undercity Sewers for turn. Our Urza Saga ticks up to two. So, I'm going to cast... I'm not going to activate Saga this turn. I'm going to cast uh, this first. Keep that on top. Oh, I forgot about this trigger. I guess I should cast the roots first. I was just thinking about Force of Negation. Fine, I guess. I'm gonna keep up this Relic Pop for a while. Good to draw a cookbook, have the roots going. I guess... Let's go ahead and just make sure we can get a trigger here. Get another prismatic ending into their hand, so probably losing our roots. Maybe they'll prismatic ending my relic. So feels like an uphill battle. Yeah, it's usually the case when your opponent uh, remembers an Atraxa or uh, Gorius is an Atraxa. If they mill an Atraxa here and they have another Gorius, which I don't think we know about. Yeah, they put Ephemerate in their hand over. They did mill an Atraxa, so if they have Gorios in their hand, they can get this back by going Pending on Relic. We pop, they respond. Is there no YouTube videos for a few days? I, I haven't talked to my editor. I posted a YouTube short yesterday. I thought I thought there was a YouTube video posted. One posted two days ago. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'll have to reach out. We lose this oval chase, so we have another one in our hand, too. They do find Ephemerate here. If we get, we have like three or four looks at an Asmo next turn. Island attracts the Ephemerate. Another Ephemerate's gonna be tricky. The short isn't posted as extra short, just regular videos? Damn it. I really thought I posted it as a short. Come on, Asmo, but even Asmo is like. <laughs> not it. I guess I'm not dead on board, though. Another cookbook. I'd actually like two more looks at Asmo, because I get the surveil. Inti's so good in this deck. It was good to be on this build. Okay, we and this is now we, we graveyard a Daredevil. That's another another dare, uh, another trigger off the uh, the roots. The four roots triggers this turn. And there's another roots. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think kind of like last game, we're just trying to overpower our opponent here. Should be pretty safe, too. I guess, oh, they have Gristlebrand in the yard, but... I just said they had Gristlebrand. Not a lot, of, not a lot of I could really do about that, I guess. Don't have delirium anymore to like chump block the channeler other they could pending. I don't think we know that they have another Gorios. How many Gorios are gone? One, two. Eh. Roots looking good. 
Could get on the life gain food plan. Yeah, potentially. They failed to find on their fetch. This is... Thing. They mill a fatal push. We're gonna lose that empty, I guess. Beautiful is really good in this deck, I think. It just does so much and is also a good card, card selection spell. Can trigger Insidious Roots, Dig for Dicks Roots. Is, is very hard to break. Fills up the Graveyard for Chandler pretty well. Makes Chandler like a good card in this deck, too. Um, okay, it looks like they're digging for the other Gorios. They put a Celestial Purge into their hand. Maybe they like exile a Roots this turn and um, push my MT. They're just going to cash in all their Ephemerates and they, they do find the Gorios Vengeance. Unfortunately. Yeah, crazy games. It was kind of bad to lose this one. Like that, that, uh. Let me keep this hand on the draw. See, see how it develops. It's going to be hand. My opponent playing Amulet Titan because that matchup is very bad. They probably are if they're leading on Urza Saga. We, like, we have, we have so much in our sideboard dedicated for it, but it's just like, in like, and like, maybe you could win some games on the play. It's just like when they when you lose the die roll, they lead on sagas. Very. I cast the the roots this turn. Um, let's graveyard this. This is a something we could cling to dust for a roots trigger. Consider Ace for the Gateway Express. Okay. Not, not, what, what's the card? What's the text? When this case in this battlefield, two target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. To solve, three more creature deck this turn. Solve, plus one, plus oh. Maybe in Pioneer. I feel like in Modern, the power level is probably not quite there on that card. I think I, I think I want to cast cookbook first, get the surveil. Then I want a seed of hope. I'd love to find Asmo, obviously, but you know it's not. Oh, like that necessarily does that much this turn. We find just a land instead. We don't find a creature to trigger the um the roots. So should I cling to dust my Inti for a definite? Oh, sorry. I also should have. I should have. If, I should have cast my next thing first because I could have surveilled over another daredevil and then triggered it. I'm gonna cast Seed of Hope. I think. Digging for an Asmo. Um, I'll, I'll keep this on top just so it, I, I definitely can trigger the roots. Though, I find Asmo anyways, which is nice. So, the problem is, of course, that we're probably dead next turn. Um, but if we if we survive next turn, they're, they're probably not gonna be able to win. So, kind of classic. Like we maybe could have won this game on the play. We are on the draw. In four life, of seed of hope. They lead on crumbling vestige. Don't be fooled. <laughs> Don't be fooled by the lack of Titan yet. They pick up crumbling vestige instead of this. Oh wow, it gets in tough. <laughs> Thing is, I can only kill two Dryads next turn, which is kind of a problem. Unless I find another cookbook. I guess I could maybe cling to Dustin too after some surveilling. Oh, oh, oh baby, what a draw. Wow. I can go cling to dust, target their Urza Saga, cast roots, trigger trigger the stuff. I don't know Delirium. 
I'm okay, Chandler, just like the surveil machine is also obviously pretty dang good in this deck. Roots trigger roots. So crazy, just a touch. Then we want to exile our own card. Cling only draws a card if you target a non-creature. So if we target our own creature, we would not have been able to cast a second roots. Pretty sick turn. Still could be, still could be dead <laughs> after all that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, there's a, there's a good chance we're alive with them being like minus two drop. Is this enough chumps that they double aim at Titan? I'm not even sure it's chumps, but yeah, I, I think it could be two hasty Titans here. I have nine plus five, fourteen, fifteen plus Asmo plus Chandler. They start off playing a garden as their land drop for turn. That's another ring, which is interesting. Interest ring. And they copy an amulet and then they pass, so we get to, get to keep keep doing our thing. Um, might as well make this saga token. We get the fourth cookbook, so I have two saga activations up. Well, I could maybe, um, I could, is, is it, or is it two asthma activations? I'm kind of tempted almost to, like, get back the NT, but I could just escape cling if I want a little bit more juice, you know? Let's see what my top card is. Another asthma. Don't need another asthma. Look again. Yeah, I think I'll just, you know. Trigger roots a million times, have two asthma activations up. Ridiculous amount of power and toughness. Plus one counter on each. We can cling twice. Yeah, looks like we have enough mana to cling twice also. It's gonna be tough for them to, to beat this, because I can just kill all their dryads and then their titans can't get through. And obviously if they just never like pass the turn without ring protection, <laughs> what are they gonna do? I can also I can also trigger roots two more times at instant speed here. Uh or four more times because I have two roots. Not not that not that I need much more power or toughness here. Turn five. Hundred power in play. I think I'm like never killing a Titan with Asmo. I'm like all I'm all I'm I'm just saving these for Dryads. Like uh, kind of no card matters here besides Dryad. They only have two more in the deck. Gaining twelve helps with the Valakid plan. I mean, I, I, I don't really see how they get me with the Valakid plan because I'm just, I'm just not going to kill a Titan with Asmo. And unless they have like main deck dismember for Asmo, I'm not sure how we lose. You can escape. Yeah, I, I guess I could trigger each root four times. I, I think I'm more likely to want a card than I am two more root triggers at this point. Although we could maybe go for the record for most power and toughness in play. Funny we could even beat. I, I think I think we could just beat their entire deck here. Like I I don't I just don't know how they win. Like e even if they have like a crazy Kessig Wolf run, it's like what are they gonna do? Yeah, the root decks are interesting because this card is just this card is is really absurd. Like this card is really absurd. But of course it comes at the uh, the cost of playing you know a, you know a, <laughs> all all these kind of cards. But I don't know. I, th I think this list is like. I think it's kind of simultaneously like the best at like doing the thing because you have so much card selection, 
it's it's like the best at doing the thing, and it's also the best at um, having a higher card quality. So I think this is you know pretty good. Can't they fireball me? There's there's like there's like no chance that this 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 can get through all of this. If we're, if we're or, or, unless, unless oh, are we talking about the new card? No, not the new fireball card. Aim with Titan's always one step ahead. Yeah, if, if they're playing if they're playing the the green red X spell, that's maybe enough to get me. Yeah, they also could have Odawara. Dang, maybe we're not out of it. Yeah, we just gain twelve. It might not be enough, um, but we can't. We can gain twelve. Yeah, they also have Odawara for the Asmo. Dude, War is so good. I always forget that they play this card. Yeah, they have World Souls Rage. What about a Roots and Dread style deck? I, I don't think it would be good. It's like not really what you're trying to, to do in those kind of strategies for the most part, I think. Yeah, Dom, I think, popularized Odawara when he played it at the Pro Tour. So good. I think just such a broken deck. Did certainly go into today feeling like it was the worst matchup. Uh, I mean, I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna die this turn, right? Well. Not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily. Probably, probably, probably. They didn't hit another Teleria West. I don't, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna concede. One, one thing too is like they may be kind of capped on the amount of damage they can deal with Valakut this turn. And I, I might, I might actually just be able to survive off of uh, life gain. Just audio the amulets? Well, I can't. Because my, my opponent has to put them on the stack first. Plus the class is toughness. It's not super relevant. It's about to shrink a lot too because it bounces on I guess I don't have the biggest plant in play anymore. High level finale in this deck. Finale is a good card. Like I, I think you can play finale, and this does exactly like the double green is pretty tough. And I, I've been really liking just like the lower mana curve. Also, um, I, I feel like I've had like I had a draft that had finale and roots and uh, mausoleum secrets. Should I just like I just had, felt like I had so many two drops in these hands? It's because you just want to go like inti or roots into a ton of one drops is kind of the thing. Also, a really low mana curve in your inti deck is always nice. screen is super easy roots pay for it you you cannot evaluate the mana cost of your cards be like if i have roots and i have a bunch of plants and those plants are untapped then this card is easy to cast this is never the way you should evaluate the castability of your two drop <laughs> dude magic what one one thing about able titan is like magic online can just like not really handle this very well <laughs> It's like Magic Online just doesn't handle like this turn well enough, and so it's like minimum ten minutes. And so in, in that way, his amulet is a bit nerfed. Yeah, this would be a good hand hider. But finale is a finisher. Oh, I I don't know why you'd be talking. I mean, obviously it could be a cool finisher, right? Like you can X equals ten, but it doesn't feel like the most relevant part of the card. Literally, what else would it be for? The, the, the main thing Finale would be for is casting on turn two and putting Asmo into play. That's what I'm concerned about, the castability of that in my three-color Urza Saga deck. <laughs> I'm concerned about casting Finale for green-green on turn two to put Asmo in play, which is what you do with Finale nine times out of ten. They could haste casting the Cultivator. I don't think that that would, I, I don't think that would do enough. I could also tr trigger Roots like four times or something. 
<laughs> I can't believe there's still this many triggers in this deck. No, I'm not playing in the Pro Tour, but I'm going to play the 75k standard open where top 8 qualified for the next one, not qualified for this one. Copies, SWR, but mirror pull bounce, so I'm play a copy original again. Yep. Yeah, the wincon is Valica, not attacking. I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm playing in the 75k. I watched. I watched like two hours of Ash stream last night, and I don't know. That, that, nothing. Uh, I, I might just play that Anvil deck she posted. I might just play Boros. I don't. I don't know. I kind of want to play a Cryptic Coat deck, but I don't think Cryptic Coat looks that good in Standard. Because it's just like the the whole format just seems to be about just putting as much power and toughness into play as possible. Yeah, Ash is a great streamer. I've been really enjoying uh, watching her stream. Yeah, the root sticks in standard look okay, too. Um, the thing is, it's just like, they seem so bad if you don't draw roots. They seem so bad if the roots gets removed. I don't know. Have you seen the Slogurg deck? I've seen it. I, I don't know. It's the Slogurg decks have been around for a long time, and they like they never looked super good to me. Wait, they haven't played a land this turn. Oh, they have the Explorer floating. Very unlikely. There's not a single card in their hand that doesn't let them put another land in play. The grazer. Okay, three pick your poisons in. Haywire might in. Three damping spheres in. Needle in. Relic out. Shadow spear out. Eat of hopes out. Thing out. The bobble. Yeah, my opponent had lethal. <laughs> I was dead there. My channel is maybe kind of bad cutting my seeds. I kind of need the pressure. What is needle name? The One Ring. I think I can. I guess the might is not going to be a little slow. I'm going to keep this in. Ring is the only thing. You can also name Teleri West. You can name Poseidon. You can name uh, Hasteland. You can name Kessig Wolfron. But it's I, I mostly for ring. I guess like every deck playing four rings, if you have a needle in your sideboard, you should bring it in. But it, and I seem solid, maybe instead of the green one drop. Um, I don't know, it seems kind of... It, it could be good, it could be good, but I... I really like Seed of Hope also. And I'm not super excited about raising the curve, because I felt like a big problem in... Um, some of our earlier lists. I want to draw Asmo, yeah... Oh, Asmo. How many misses is too many for Seed of Hope? I'm not 100. percent I, I know we're way like we're we're really good at the moment on our our number. I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the bare minimum is. I'm just gonna kneel the one ring now. Yeah, the the ring is like I mean it's it's obviously a very good card, modern staple, but it it you you are right. It has mellowed out a lot. I think I think Canister put it really well when he said it. At the end of the day, it is a four mana card advantage spell in modern, and just like four drops in general are just they're just so capped in how how powerful they can possibly be. Um, yeah, I gotta play this saga now so that I can use the stomping ground to activate Haywire Might. Um, probably discarding a cookbook end of turn under all circumstances. Like, Renin 6 level broken but not ban worthy. Yeah, I mean, Renin 6 is also, like, 
Uh, these these decks have just kind of really fallen off super hard. Mine's in a very odd place at the moment. Seems like I'm gotta cast pick your poison here. Grab Haywire Might. Make you sacrifice. I guess I should. I got a saga token. Should I should I kill the could I should I kill the saga? I think I just kill No, I'll kill I'll kill the anger. Because now, because now, obviously, that could just sack the construct. Then let's play the cookbook for extra power toughness. If they want to chump, that's okay. Okay, well, now we we just never could off the the pick of poison. I think the top of Martyrman is pretty combo focused. Kind of, it's like like. It's like it's like domain zoo rhinos titan domain rhinos regular rhinos. They have protection from everything. Ring is needled though. The blue white blue white control decks have also been feeling pretty good to me. Dog Titan Rhinos. I feel like the Domain Zoo decks are also like so popular and pretty good. Um. Okay. I feel like I'm also. I don't know why I'm like dog dog Titan Rhinos. There's, isn't there like one more like huge deck living in? Yeah, living in is also popular and good. Yeah, I would I wouldn't say Rhinos is combo also. Like like I don't I don't view Rhinos as a combo deck usually. But there's I don't know why I'm blanking on like the other big deck at the point right now. Murktide maybe? I guess Murktide Murktide's not very good. It's a scam Murktide. They're popular though. Zoo beats Jug. Yeah, Zoo is really good, I think. I th I think I think Zoo is like well positioned. Okay. One is cyborg game. Yeah, Lutri. <laughs> I lost Lutri yesterday. As you usually really got solo by Chandra Torture Defiance twice. Good keep. Razor, Besaidu, Mirror Pool. Four cards left over there. Steve Hope does trigger roots if you mill a creature. Rhinos isn't combo, it's a, a bit of an unfair deck. Unfair strategies. I I I don't know. I, I usually don't qualify Rhinos as an unfair strategy, but it's all semantic-y people. You know. You could you could qualify that if it meets your definition. With a interesting keep over there. In your new black decks of modern heavy resistors, you could blow masters. Uh, it's kind of easy. Bow masters is kind of mid and modern at the moment. It is not good against rhinos. It's not good. It's not very good against domain zoo. It has its moments against domain zoo because they're a ragamin deck of beast. It's not good against titan. It has its moments because they're a ring deck, but it's it's not a card I'm super excited to have against titan. I think it's not good against yawgmoth. It is. Uh, it, 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 Bowmaster is a fine card. You can include it, but it, it, this is also like a super highly synergistic list that I, I'm a little bit less excited to include it in. Maybe sandbagging this amulet because I have all this removal. Yeah, maybe just top, top pick this. Maybe just been sandbagging. Maybe they're not playing a dryad here into my Asmo. I paid four life, so maybe I should, I should have should I have killed the grazer? I don't know.
And I think not. Needle Mirror Pool. A lot of good top decks here. Okay. Um, I'm going to need a little One Ring. Three cards in their hand. Looking for Asthma, looking for Inti, looking for Roots, looking for Haywire Might, looking for Pick Your Poison, looking for... Uh, Damping Sphere. Looking for Basic Forest. Saga Token's gonna be big. <laughs> Isn't Squee good at this shit? Returns to hand all by himself. You can play Squee. We we had we had Squee in our first draft of Roots. Um, I think I think because we have so much deck selection uh, with um, also also in Squee is worse than than Daredevil. We have so much card selection um, that I I do think Squee is worse than. Then, then Daredevil, and I, I just I kind of feel like we don't have a super hard time assembling the engine with four Seed of Hope, four Bobble, four Street Wraith, four Inti, four Channeler. Just so good at like finding our pieces. With the chump block my construct, let's stay, take 16. And we have two lethal attackers for next turn. We get to uh, might the amulet. Picker poison. Have to keep on top. Can't draw it this turn. I'll have to keep this for like a weird random. Maybe they have the One Ring in their hand and they you know, didn't play last turn because it's needled and they just want to have a protection this turn. Reminds me of the very beginning of MH2. Cookbook, <laughs> Cookbook Daredevil Saga tokens where like, people thought this was the new Hogak. So you only have Daredevil and Relic that triggers roots. Um, Seed of Hope also triggers it, but it's like... Yes, this these are like the main ways you trigger it. Also, you can surveil uh, Daredevil, you're, you're Daredevil, right? But you have you have only these, but it's like let's look at let's look look at the rest of the deck here, where li liter literally oh okay not every other card okay it's like these are your roots these are your engine cards we have some clean to dust that triggers it so let's say these are this is the stuff that triggers it we have one springleaf drum one shadow spear four roots. And cards that trigger it, and then we have twenty-eight selection spells. <laughs> if we include Saga, we have twenty-eight cards that dig for these cards, and that's just kind of the whole deck. Nando, five months. Nox to the twelve. Hope you're doing well. Today, on the play. So the mold of six. This was a green or black source I'd be leading on cookbook here. Then let's dig for one with a channeler bobble. Ding ding ding. No worries, can I guess you then? Planet revealed Ornithopter, Manamo. Moon snares like big Urza with like one ring, probably. Be Cryptic Coat. That was fun. Always like playing those decks. What in D?
Keep that on top. Yeah, so we're gonna go. We're just gonna get our engine going next turn. Cookbook, Asmo cookbook, trigger roots twice, at least twice. If I surveil another daredevil, I can maybe get another. So the one ring, they mill Agatha Soul Cauldron, so like bigger blue cauldron. Cool with Moon Snare. Interesting. What's the ideal sideboard card for Ring and Esper Archon? Just Stony. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think Stony is incredible in the Esper like Persist Esper Gorios decks. You just get to say two mana. You have no graveyard hate. Um, I'm not really sure what matchup you're like dying to counter the Ring in because like at least I've been playing Esper Gorios over Esper Persist, and I just Main deck for Force of Negation and also Atraxa Gorios can Atraxa Femre can just outvalue. Can outvalue the ring a lot of the time. So they can Aether Spell on my Asmo to stop me from killing Emery this turn. I uh, don't agree with that. Happy, very happy to draw it. That is what they choose to do. Roots again. Pass back. Agatai, four months. Welcome back. Also, so yeah, they have, they have the monomers to go with the ring. Also, and they, I have, I have a pretty powerful value engine too. And the Archon has felt better recently. I don't. I, what, what change? Attracts is more powerful than Archon. <laughs> what what change that makes Archon feel better? I feel like Atrax is just so much like just such a stronger card that also like <laughs> like pitches to everything and you get to play Gorios, which is a better card than Persist. Like <laughs> what changed recently, you know what I mean? Okay, so I have five mana, we'll probably have six, so one, two, three, four, five. Nice. Let's just start with NT. So NT, not the most helpful. Maybe I'll surveil before my next trigger. Okay, nice. Graveyard. Global Trace is another free trigger here. Next also Street Wraith, also not super helpful. Uh, yeah, it seems fine just to be able to hit the land drop here. This engine is really sick and it's really fast and it's been very. I think we've done this like every single game too. There's another another very notable thing is is like match four, where you know and and like it's like just every single game has been like this, which has been pretty exciting. Really, don't think we've had a a game where we haven't been able to do our thing. We did lose to you know. Gorio's deck. I kill both your creatures. Not Tybur to give the token haste to be sick of this deck. Yeah, Tybur. The thing is, Tybur is just not that good of a card, right? Our first draft had Tybur, um, but what, what what I like, what, what's very cool to me about this list is this list. I think is the most consistent at doing the thing because like just like we we just we just did this but like every like we, this is the engine and then you have 28 card selection spells to like fuel the engine and you have one drum one shadow spear 16 other lands besides your urgent sagas and you curve out at two so your mana curve is really low and it's it's so nice you have NT or roots as like your value engine and another thing too about NT asmo decks is like you really wanted another like two mana value engine besides NT in the shell now you have that in roots um, and it's just like you tap out from one or the other, and then every card is so cheap, and they just trigger everything, and they just have so much selection. It, you're just like you're just like going to get this going. Missed the land drop? Did I? Know, oh, I meant to. Obviously, I meant to play the play the Meyer. It's it's okay. <laughs> it actually doesn't matter that much, I guess. I was finding Atraxa games harder to close out, specifically killing Hexproof Sign of Draco. That's been great. Okay, that that's something that I like killing Hexproof Sign of Draco.
good argument for Archon. Okay, up a game against Affinity. Pick a poison, pick a poison, haywire mites, pithing needle, pithing needle. Um Probably not a Shadow Spear matchup. Like their shit is just like they're they're a slower version of the deck and their deck's also kinda of slow. I'm gonna keep in the relic, maybe I'll cut the cling and then probably just cut the seed of hopes. We keep a seed of hope in over bobble, maybe. If that makes sense. Maybe, it's, maybe you could try that. I, I am bringing in like a bunch of instants and sorceries. Let's, let's, let's do two two. I like two two. I think your dice factory extra turns deck is still viable in the meta game. Um, I I don't recommend playing scepter in the dice factory deck anymore. It's just kind of like not a very necessary win con. Um, but there there's a lot of like decks that are playing a ton of dis like like would rhinos and titan and yog moth are the most popular decks in the format, which is like you know they're like three of the top five. These are all green decks that just, like, love to play a ton of Force of Vigors and Besages and Haywire Mites. Rec Reclamation Sage out of Yawgmoth. It's just... It just ain't the time. If they have Thopter Combo Spear, is a good way to get through Chumpers. We can also just Roots to, like, overpower, but... It didn't look like they had Thopter Combo. All of their, all of their lands only tap for blue. They had Dark Soul Citadel on their deck also. Seems like Thopter Foundry would be hard for them to cast. I think Seed of Hope is really, really good in this deck. I'm I'm a big, big believer. It's just it's just like a good card selection spell that also triggers roots. It also helps Channeler a lot and also uh and also gains just also gains two life. <laughs> Let's go for Surveil Land here. Still Seeker? Uh you could play Still Seeker. Um the thing is, I'm I'm not really wanting to play like another two drop. I really like the, how the how low the mana curve is, and like you know, basically every suggestion is like like always is <laughs> suggestions to raise the mana curve. But I I I really like how low this deck's mana curve is, and um, I kind of want to try to keep it that way. Does deck need Cauldron and Cat? It has not felt like we need those cards. The name Rona. It's also like you know how how like is that, is that eight cards? Is it five? Because you play one. Uh, cook, uh, Aldrin has a Urza Saga target. But I I, I do want to play a cat uh cat oven, and stick at some point. Would a green red surveil land be slightly better than Rakdos? Uh, maybe slanting the mana a bit more green because you have more green than black spells and extra cast. Yeah, maybe. I was. It's always kind of weird because, in like, in some ways, you like you want to be able to get stomping ground, and then cast green red spell. Then your other card is like this. Emery looking good. Get in down. Run Caldron Catafurna Supplier Undead Butler build. Maybe we read Undead Butler. Yeah, but we we played our first two builds were supplier builds. And I was kind of I'm kind of been happy to not have that card in my deck anymore. You cut Street Wraith for some lands, three or four land cycles, troll, only fun so you can play Gigantha. Street, Street Wraith is like a ridiculous card in the stack. Street, Street Wraith is just so absurd with Inti and Asmo, and it's just, it's just it's just zero mana to cycle instead of the land cyclers. I know I know that like the land cycles that you play Gigantha, but Street Wraith is so much better than the land cyclers that it, it doesn't seem to me that that would be a worthwhile exchange. This is our discard enabler for Asmo. <laughs> Another empty. I did just take the hit. We have to cast Asmo this turn. I guess I'm gonna should I pick, I should I just pick your poison? Doesn't seem like it's getting a lot better. I guess I guess I guess what we should actually do is figure the NT one more time first. Yeah, Gorehound could be good. I I'm kind of on board for Gorehound. Not quite this is basic mountain, but The thing is, Gorehound and Moss Pit only needs two Moss Pit or two Roots to go infinite. But I think they could modern. Yeah, it seems to be like more of a Pioneer shell. So I, I was thinking, I was thinking tomorrow during the Modern Challenge, 
Um, I'm e- I'm either gonna double queue the legacy showcase, the legacy or the vintage showcase. I have no idea what I'll play. If anybody has any good vintage decks? Let me know. I guess. Uh, I'm either gonna double queue the vintage showcase, or I'm going to like do some pioneer brewing where I want to play. I want to brew pioneer Voha elves, and I want to brew uh, pioneer roots on stream tomorrow potentially. Maybe we can maybe do all of it. All of the netherworld over seed of hope. I mean, I feel like Seed of Hope has looked amazing in the deck, but if you're going to play Call of the Netherworld, you probably would be doing something like cutting Bobble Channeler for Stitcher Supplier and, like, the the, the two-drop that discards. Okay, cook, Needle Cookbook, very tough for us to, to beat here. Vintage Lure Saga, that sounds fun, yeah. One thing is, I, it's just like, with, when you're not experienced in Vintage, it probably isn't good, a good idea to play, like, a fair deck. Because, like, I don't know. I mean, I could try to do fine, but... Sounds like awkward the mana base a few times. Yeah, I know. It's, I mean, it's just like we have... I know we have this, and we have Urza Saga. Our mana's going to be a little awkward. People always, always hate, over-hate on the mountains. <laughs> they have Blood Moon Brain, but... I kind of think it's a card you just need to have in your deck. We're gonna go to game three. No blood gas in this build. It's like I what I, re, I what I really do like about this build is we have we have no blood gas, we have no stitcher supplier, we have no cauldron familiar, we have no witch's oven, we have no shambling gas. So it's like it's like all the all our cards are just bangers, and all of our other cards are like big selection cards that just help you assemble the engine. And all the fun cards. Yeah, but when I say bad... Oh, do we get upheavaled? Let's go! <laughs> when I say bad, I mean, like, bad. I mean, I mean like, just individually weak, you know? Easier to pick apart when you have Sushi Player, Cauldron Familiar. This, you know, we're so weak to Graveyard Hate, but it's just much harder to individually pick, pick apart these pieces. Pick apart your poison. Awesome. Pick up poisons look kind of rough last game. Let me look at my top card here. If it's a street wraith, I'm gonna. I guess I can't play the bruise. Damn it. Seed of hope. I like seed of hope here. Yeah, let's let's make you sacrifice an artifact, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cast seed of hope. My opponent's turn. Yeah, it, it does that kind of default. Well, I think it's kind of funny that it's the test card pick your poison. <laughs> I've also put it in so many sideboards, it's kind of like a little bit of a pain to change it. I just forgot about relic activation. All right, gamer. Okay. Um. I think the cookbook. This way, my turn can be roots, uh, roots, relic activation, XL, NT, trigger roots, and play cookbook. I think I still have the same turn. Yeah, Sea Trigger's roots if you build a creature. He's really good in the stack. Got me ruins, six cards in their hand. Street Wraith mandatory. Yeah, Street Wraith is insane. In, in your Asmo NT deck, you should always have four Street Wraith. I think with like just like, and it's just not an argument for me. It's also like good to like just have creatures in your yard in this deck too that go into your yard for zero mana. Um, good. It's good with Dragon Rage's Channeler to like get Delirium faster. It's like it. it, it to, to me, it's like a no brainer. Like four of. 
They name Haywire Might here. And they play Mox Amber, which they can use to sack, maybe. Um, I want to play a Saga token. I also really want to, like, get my engine going a bit better. I think I'm going to prioritize that. I'll make a Saga token next turn, probably. Awesome. Incre just so rewarded here. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I've been working. I've been working on this one for like you know two weeks, like really trying to figure out the best way to, to build this deck, and I'm 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 pretty happy with where it is at the moment. Deck is just like so consistent at like doing this thing. Wow, <laughs> went from make a saga token to put like. 15 power in play or something like that. I think I agree. With, well, the thing is that they don't needle might that I can just saga for might, right? And get rid of the needle. So now I'm probably going to needle the one ring. Is there a pause on YouTube? I, I, I'm going I'm to reach out to my editor and see what's going on. I'm glad, I'm glad that people are checking in. Here. Using your audio to re-trigger is not an option. I don't know. It's just like... Depends. Oh. Message from him. Okay, apparently there's some issue processing the videos. Yeah, you can't play Archdruid's Charm in your... Like, just two on that mana curve. Tut tutoring up Inti and Asma is also, like... It's not good to tutor those cards for three mana. It's not a good play. It's not a powerful play. If, if their hand is two zero mana artifacts plus upheaval, we got here. Or if they spinners and upheaval. Or ring, I guess. They're equipping, but this is just not going to be enough. This is an extra, extra trigger. If it does anything, the charm can answer with mana you have right now. This is not a good argument, gamer. Charm is too high on the mana curve. It's too hard to cast. I know we have triple green in play right now. This is, uh, it's just, it's just, n please don't um actually me. <laughs> you can put, you can put Arcadure's Charm in this deck if you want. Yeah, I saw, I saw this trophy. This was like a while ago, right? Yeah, February 7th. Um, it's just like, obviously like, Pauldron plus Ballista is really good on these kind of boards where you have infinite damage, but... I feel like you get picked apart so hard. Like you're like it's just kind of the opposite philosophy, which could be fine. But you have you have Goose, Bowmaster, Ballista, Familiar, Witches Oven as like kind of lower quality cards that just get get picked apart super hard. Yeah, Seed over Goose could be good, but also like you're a Cauldron decks, so you kind of want the creatures. Tough. Um, are they alive? Maybe they're alive. They have something. They have Odovora. Wow. Okay, so they're probably alive. No, still dead. <laughs> Has nine, like eight power, eight power. Con um, I I also found like 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 that list also has like no card selection, which kind of concerns me. You just have to like draw your cards at the right time. Hashtag agency, whatever the meme. Okay. Getting pretty punished by the surveil land if it was untapped, this hand would be amazing. We do have two looks at an untapped land here. Um, 
I guess three if I play the cookbook turn one, which I probably should. Let's see what our top our next card is. Why is this deck one basic mountain? So like, I, I, it's just like you have like eight red creatures that like, and you might you have a lot of red fetch lands, and you might want to fetch a, ba a basic mountain. You you it could be right to not play because we have this obviously black green two drop, but also like basic, basic mountain people get tripped up on because of blood moon a lot of the time. But it's just like, it's nice to have like both of our good two drops here, so they can take one or the other. We still kind of have our engine online. Obviously, the roots is a lot better than NT on this board. But like yeah, modern players get so tripped up on basic mountain and like like we're a dragon rages channeler deck. It just feels like we should have a basic mountain. I I, I also want to have three basics. I think there's just like coffers is kind of coming back. We played against coffers earlier. Love NT and Roots in the same deck. Yeah, it's like they're both so good with the same engine, and it's it's they both go with like the low mana curve, and they both go with like the Seed of Hope DRC. Okay, they should have not done this on my instep. Now I get the this card on my next turn. Although <laughs> Street Wraith, so I, I don't actually get this card. Fortunately, they're down to three cards. Are they Mulligan? We, yeah, we both bowled a six. Looking for roots, looking for Asmo, looking for a good hit. Looking for another NT. Looking for love. Also, Lock Twain's a good, good pickup for them. So. I think it makes sense to bobble myself before I surveil. I. But like, is there any world where I'm not playing this? Is, is kind of my question. Okay, I, I yeah, I, I just got rewarded, I think, because now now I'm gonna go relic cycle play Urza Saga this turn. Otherwise, I would have just started playing the, the theater. The theater. Hmm. We're gonna ping, ping down to nine. Ping down to ten. Ping down to, or ping down to ten. Ping down to nine. They have two bowmasters. Oh, come on. Oh, they have Colagon's command. They're making me discard a card, which is so much worse than dealing me two damage here. I bet this old Jace Daredevil all down. A little bit of a punch from them. So I get pissed. Ping down to nine off the relic trigger. Ping down to eight off the bobble trigger. They attack for three, four, five, six. I'm down to two. I make a saga token. I'm dead on board. So I guess I'm surveilling. The saga away. Eat food. I can't. I can't draw the relic. I can't draw the saga. Play the saga and then eat food. Maybe it could be good to not play the surveil land in the stack. It's. I, it's. I think. I think this league has been bad more often than it would. It would have been good. Oh, well, not very relevant card, unfortunately. We also can't draw Asmo anymore because we have our. Book engine off. I guess I have to pop relic end of turn and hope. What are we adding entry to this deck? Probably any day now. Curves, cur the curve in this deck is really low. I think maybe it's good to not play this. Trying to envision path to victory. It would it would have been like book. Oh, sorry, I've lost my. There, yeah, that guess it didn't matter that much. Okay, game two. So I added the pirate spell bomb after play testing off stream because it's pretty important to kill Dothy Voidwalker in this matchup. Um, you also need a haywire mite for their Layla Void. Cut the well, Kling is good against their 
Maybe I'm gonna cut a bobble and a channeler. Maybe I go down two channelers. It's like they, they have a lot of graveyard hate and they have bowmasters. Maybe even play a needle for explosives. Like I, they're they're probably on a bunch of explosives at the moment. It almost seems good to cut. I don't think I don't think I want a second relic. Where did one of the main? I don't think I want a second second relic. Unless like, I think the first channeler is probably you know, pretty reasonable to keep. I have nine fetch lands right now and seven fetchable targets. Probably are we cutting this for like second stomping ground? Let's play Besaidu. I think I probably want a seventh fetchable. Yeah, it's been a long league. I mean, we played against like Amulet Titan and like the the, the Titan player and the uh, Scorios player both. Oh, like all the Titan players just like a ten minute combo turn. Being okay about the sideboard also. First time we've like cut the only surreal land, but I think in this deck it makes sense. How can go through? It's, yeah, I, I think we just need a seventh fetchable and our like, like just just let's just have good mana in our three color deck. Yeah, I, I think I think I don't I don't think this this has really been good all day. I think like we've I I've, I really dislike to have the tap land of this deck so far, which is surprising because the surreal lands and like I mean maybe just mostly good in like the blue white blue deck, the Gorius decks. It was also it was the, the surreal land. I also say was good when we had Bloodgast and Oval Chase to surveil into the yard for value. With just Oval Chase, it's a lot less likely that you get that extra value. Definitely gonna keep this on the play against um. Damn. If you get a top card, Street Wraith. I'm okay drawing that. So I've got like the Queen Dust. Okay, so. Let's cycle this first. Okay, so painful. So painful. I'm gonna cling to dust to gain three life in a second though, so maybe it's gonna be okay. So if I if I don't draw, I guess I guess I have the token. Oh, so I can go I can go cling to dust uh, my street wraith, then cast the second roots off the. Uh... I wish I'd. Oh, okay. Swingy, <laughs> swingy turn. Woodwalker, obviously nice here for them. It is. Uh, needle engineered explosives. I take three, gain three. Nine life after my my opponent's attacking for the first time here. Yeah, get pirate spell bomb off the the saga potentially. We have Delirium despite this uh, Voidwalker being played, which is kind of interesting. I can also attack with my plant. We have Bowmaster. I'm okay trading it for the Orc Army, probably. But the two bolts. So we have the option to play around a dying effect by not getting pirate spell bomb. Although it's like that's probably not a good plan, right? Because I I can I can still I just make two saga tokens and then still have the ability to pirate spell bomb this on their turn. So I'm just taking just taking a lot less damage, and then I just have so many so many constructs in play. And like Shadow Spirit plays just so much. I, I lose like removal spell plus bolts, or this doesn't. So I go one, two, Saga Token, Springleaf Drum, or Pirate Spell Bomb, or vice versa, I guess. 
probably I guess we don't main phase the saga token activation because of Hugu. Okay, command on top. Oh, I did not this game. I don't I don't see it in the revealed zone. Oh I, I bobbled myself this game, didn't I? Like how did I see it? Kill Dothi. Well they have undying effects, so I'm not gonna main phase the Dothi kill. Now we're dead to a bolt. Game one? Okay, sure, sure. And a summoning Kulagon's command. Okay, game. I think good looking league though. Uh, maybe we'll, maybe even win game one if... Nah, probably not. But if this, this, this rail land was a stomping ground, so it would have been nice. Let's run it back, cut this rail land. Or at least one more. I'm <laughs> sorry.